It's time to put little Timmy to bed and tune into the radio show sweeping the nation. Live from Wisconsin, this isn't normal. When the night is calm and peaceful, loving hearts are all in tune. There's two lonesome people in the whole wide world, that's me and the man in the moon. When the little birds are nesting, and I listen to them croon. There's two lonesome people in the whole wide world. That's me and the man in the world. Hello, everyone, and welcome to This Isn't Normal, a podcast experiment. I'm Maxwell Marone, and I'm joined by uh, Beth Tripp, Brett Abraham, and uh, Mark Patnod. Why don't you guys go ahead and say hello? Hello, I'm Beth. I'm Mark. Hi, I'm Brett. Okay, <laughs> perfect. That Great. worked out well. <laughs> Max. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> There's actually no editing here, so we can't do that one again. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> um, this is all. This I blame. Is all, this it's... is all just in the moment. Yep. So, um, before we jump right into the action, I uh, I wanted to spend a few minutes to talk about what we're doing and who you're going to get to know. Uh, so this is uh based on the Call of Cthulhu system. Uh, it is a tabletop role playing game. Uh, based on the work of H.P. Lovecraft. The, uh, the, the way the system works is uh, our characters, our heroes, will roll dice. And uh, based on that, they will have either success or failure. And then they will get to do their thing. There's a crap ton of skills to choose from, and it's a great time. That's all I... <laughs> crap ton of buttload. <laughs> that's what I wanted to say on the <laughs> subject. So, uh, who wants to go first for talking about their character? Oh, I will. All right, Beth. Uh, so you are playing a private investigator named Dandy. I am indeed. Uh, my name is, actually my full name is Dandera, Dandera Lane. She goes by Dandy. I am indeed a private investigator, fuck, a private investigator. I'm like 23. I'm from Fargo. Uh, Where is Fargo? Minnesota. And are Super. you, are you like 23 or are you? <laughs> you know what? You don't ask a woman her age. Well, right. that's Sorry. that's exactly right. So when she says she's like twenty three, it's <laughs> she could be anywhere from like maybe like nineteen to twenty eight, and you just you don't want to ask that question. Yeah, she's um, actually forty. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can tell by my wrinkles. <laughs> it's Maybelline. Don't don't. Um. So so is there anything else you can tell us about Dandy? Um. She's going through a bit of a rough patch. She's not super. Uh, well off in the monetary means uh now when now when you say super not well off she's poor she's poor okay excellent how yeah. poor um let's see how much money do i get to spend a day uh 10 whole dollars well it is the 1920s so 10 whole dollars <laughs> and i own my own business and i'm an adult and i'm I, oh i do I do have this one thing where I don't have a place to live, so I live in my office under my desk. <laughs> so Oh, it's it's under your desk. <laughs> I do. I live under my desk with a pillow and a blanket. I just kind of stuff that shit under there. I'm, I don't think I'm specifically that tall, maybe. I don't think I'm that tall. I feel like I can fit pretty well. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. I'm, I'm poor. All right. Uh, so, Mark. Yeah, who, that's me. Who are you going to be? I, uh, I am... Ernest Hawthorne. Okay. He uh he he's a he's a bootlegger. Okay. He's he, he covers as like a he's got a Photoshop. Not not essentially like Photoshop, you know. You know. Where where he sells does he now does he like sell photos or will he like go to your wedding and take pretty pictures of the bride and groom? He's not really good at photography, so he just kind of <laughs> sells you photos. Okay, so he just <laughs> art pieces. <laughs> it's a photo but... of a garbage can. <laughs> But again, that's that's all just a ruse to uh, to sort of be a bootlegger and, and smuggle alcohol into the city. Yeah, exactly. Um, he's he's twenty three. He's a youngin, you know. Is he like twenty three? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, he's he's a southern boy. You know, he's a he's he's not a good boy, but he's okay. He's where, a medium boy. Where is yeah, he from? He's, from the south max <laughs> okay north carolina <laughs> all right well Why shouldn't it be south carolina st- i was gonna say that but no I, the joke's ruined now you guys you guys suck goodbye um <laughs> we're going away now we're cruising <laughs> brett who are you uh well i am jimmy james mcgrath okay uh he is 28 not like <laughs> 
he was born in Sands Point, Long Island. Uh, <clears throat> and he is what's called a dilettante, which for you two poor folks, that means he's rich as all hell. Right. Where did his money come from? His money came from his daddy. Daddy. Okay. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he did absolutely nothing to earn his money. And in fact, he blows more money than he earns. Um, so so two questions. What does his dad do? That's a great question. Um, his father never actually told him. Oh, uh, <laughs> to that be because he is actually the uh, least favorite of the three children. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Oh, no. When he was born, his mother died in childbirth with oh. him. Well, that also. So, yeah. So, um, <laughs> so they've kind of always held it against him, which means it's good because that means he has absolutely no responsibility. He still gets money, not as much as his brother and sister, but he doesn't have to run the business. So he dresses up like an adventurer that I, I don't know if I'm allowed to name. Uh, Oklahoma Stan. <laughs> Pretty much, uh, with a <laughs> he has his own bullwhip and leather fedora, and uh, he he leather? just yeah, it is leather. Leather fedora, yes, it is leather. We sweaty. looked into this. Yeah. Listen, Oklahoma Stan Stan. I kind of imagine it being he, like stitched together too. It's stinky. Well, no, no, he this he, guy this guy has the money to pay for it. I oh, want yeah, you to know like... when I was racking up his miscellaneous assets, like all his assets, <laughs> his miscellaneous assets came out to six thousand dollars. What the wow. fuck? I couldn't even afford an apartment. <laughs> and again, I this is this oh, also, <laughs> yeah. In addition, uh, he has a penthouse in New York, <laughs> and also a large house in Zanzibar, Connecticut. Oh fuck! I mean... Maybe I should have. Okay, that's fine. Hey, everyone, the story takes place in Sense of Connecticut. Mark, can you do me a favor and just switch that around real quick so that that part's first? Yeah, I got you. All right, cool. <laughs> I can do beep, that. beep, editing. Beep, beep, editing. Yeah, yeah. What happened to no editing? <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 ha, it's a joke, hey, guys. hey, Beth, what's your character's name since we're not, like, I don't know. What's your character's name? I couldn't remember it. Dandy. Dandy. Ernest, are, are, you, are you writing that down somewhere? Yeah, at the bottom where it says fellow investigators. Oh, hmm. buddy. I never thought to do that. What's and I'm probably not again? going to. My character's name is Jimmy James McGrath. <laughs> okay, I'm going to remember that because I have a playlist called Jimmy Jim Jams. Of course you do. <laughs> Beth, so I think that Ernest is going to call Dandy Dandelion at some point. <laughs> I don't know if she'll like that. I we'll guess see. we'll find out. We'll see. Well, maybe given the context, she'll. if you're not a shitbag, maybe she'll like you more. I don't think he's a shitbag. Okay. We'll see. Speaking of uh, finding out, I think it's time to find out some stuff. You guys ready? Oh, I'm ready. Oh shit. Okay. Oh yeah. Can I? Is I can I can swear right? Like that's Yeah, cool. you can swear. Yeah, well, sure. We okay. already we already I've said, already done that. Like, yeah, we already said times. fuck like six times. Did we? Yeah. Yeah, we definitely. Oh did. yeah, there were definitely a lot of fucks going around. Our story begins in the town of Cincinnati, Connecticut. It is a large city located in the square center of the small state. And on this night, in the middle of November, 1926, a broadcast is heard, but not by all, but by three individuals as they sleep. And in their dreams permeates the static, and all you can hear is, please adjust, five, three, four, and at this moment, we go to Jimmy Jams, who I would imagine it's probably like three in the morning. Uh, he, I'm sorry, did you just call him Jimmy Jams? I did call him Jimmy Jams, and I might. It's Jimmy James. <laughs> when I think of Jimmy Jams, I yeah. think of somebody in their pajamas, like you know, blue like cloud pajamas. Yeah, he like wakes up yep. with like some bunny slippers. He's like, oh boy. Can they? Be... I think they're satin too. Like, yeah, he's... satin. Because he's rich. Satin undies too. Oof, he's those are slick. comfy. Great, moving right along. <laughs> I'm glad Beth's thinking about my character's undies already. <laughs> <laughs> how, how far into this are we? Ten minutes? Maybe not even? Great. <laughs> um, Brett, why, why don't you go ahead and walk me through Jimmy James's, like, nightly ritual? How does, what does he do before bed? What time does he go to bed? Well, as a man with no responsibility, he doesn't really care about what time he goes to bed. He does like to make sure that uh, when the sun is going down, he's sitting out on his porch with leather with his leather hat and kind of pulls it down b b uh, below his eyes. 
Okay. Um, That's a pretty specific ritual. <laughs> He just he just likes to make sure that he looks as badass as possible. Okay. Um, <laughs> but then at night he likes to read a uh, book. He never he never actually reads it, but he likes to like skim and can kind of read? get the general gist. He, he reads read, about. Right? He can read. He definitely can read. He just he doesn't really like to, but he likes the idea that he can. So he like reads in quotes a book, maybe like every three days. Okay. But in actuality, he really only read like half of it, if that. <laughs> what what, uh, what was he reading through? What was he reading through this night? Uh, he was reading through the Great Adventures of Oklahoma Bob. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was reading through the Great Adventures of fellow uh, Aston Martins. Okay, of fellow um, Aston Martins. Of fellow Aston Martins. So it's all about uh, this one guy who turns into an Aston Martin, What's which it? was definitely around in the 1920s. Are we going to get sued by John Aston Martin? <laughs> is he alive? <laughs> his son Cole. He is. <laughs> Cole Aston Martin. Or or he, his ghost is just going to sue the podcast. Ooh. Either way, that's fine. Brett's doomed us. We're going to. I'm going to be. Yes. I'm going to be listening through this later tonight. And I'm going to hear his voice just being like, fuck you guys. <laughs> my car um <laughs> so it's probably three in the morning and you are jolted awake do you have a radio in your room yes of course he does he has the best radio possible it is it is blaring static something awful uh he pulls out his revolver actually <laughs> <laughs> what is, wait what <laughs> uh jimmy james pulls it oh he keeps it under his pillow did i not mention that <laughs> That is new. Is that safe? <laughs> is it's it probably not safe. He's sat in gun. Wait, did, g safety, was that a, th gun safety, was that like a thing? I mean, people didn't have gun safety back then. No, like the safety's on guns. <laughs> shooty, shooty. Jimmy, Jam shooty, Jimmy shooty. James probably got it removed. So are you going That's to shoot badass. your radio? <laughs> no, Jimmy James just pulls his gun out and, and looks around to make sure that there's no one in the room. Okay, yeah, there's no one. With the gun pointed in every direction in the room. <laughs> As you swing wildly, like spinning around in a circle as fast as you can. <laughs> His patented swivel chair. <laughs> His patented swivel bed, you guys. Um, yeah, no. As you as you sort of swing your gun wildly and uh, regain some semblance of consciousness, you're aware that what woke you up was the sound of a uh, breaking glass, but not in your own house. It seems to be coming from across the street. Okay. You hear some. You hear some dogs barking and uh, the crunching of something seemingly walking on the glass. What are you gonna do? It's Idaho Jim, guys. It's not. <laughs> it is not Idaho Jim. Sorry for um, people. Are you a dummy? <laughs> what, what are you gonna do, Brad? So this this is where Jimmy James is like. This is something I've been training for for years. <laughs> um. So uh, you know how firefighters have like their their ready station. <laughs> yep. <laughs> He's got that in his hallway right outside of his bedroom. <laughs> but with his his all the clothes he needs and his leather fedora and his satchel and his bullwhip uh, along I... with his rifle. No, I have a question. I have a question. Did you think of all this before? Like is this like was this preemptive? <laughs> Not at all. Okay, this is great. Okay. See what I hate, what I love and hate about this is that because he has six thousand dollars of spare <laughs> assets that he did not specifically allocate with me before we started, I have I can't do anything about this, you guys. <laughs> All right, you go to your freaking changing station. And you <laughs> it's like a magical girl transformation. <laughs> Suddenly he's Kentucky Tom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, you get all so, your you, you get all your adventuring gear on. What are you doing now? Uh, so he just he uh, runs to his door. Okay. And he he then opens the door. Great. And, uh, he's, he's fairly good at stealth, so he starts stealthing around. Well, but he's hang also on. good at That's spotting not hidden how things. The game works. I'm just telling you, this is what he's about to do. He's gonna start stealthing and spotting hidden things. Well, okay. So why did hover suit and fly? Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Why don't you go ahead and make a stealth check for me, bud? Okay, so I just want to make sure. Um, if it's under my number, mm -hmm. so like my stealth is a 60. Okay. If it's under my number, that's a success. Less correct? than less than or equal to your number is a success. Uh, so that was a success. Yeah, you stealthily, uh, you stealth stealthily go across the street. I mean, there's no one out and about. Um, 
<laughs> Are you sure he's gonna try and spot hidden while he's sneaking though? Okay, make a spot hidden check. Another thirty-eight. So yes, success. Great, excellent. Nice. Um, yeah. so you don't, <laughs> you don't detect anything hidden, but you do see what's going down. Your neighbor's house. Are you close with your neighbor? He's a banker. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You're close. You know your neighbor. Um, yeah. You've probably maybe you've even like showed him your whip collection a few times. Uh, he definitely showed it to him. I don't. The guy wasn't really into it, but he, no, he, he it, super so. wasn't into it. But um, you know, you've you've. You've, like, hung out with him a few times. He probably, like, sort of watches you from the window when you do that weird sundown thing you do. Um, and he just sort of slowly there, draws the curtains. There but goes that fucker again. Come away from the mirror, Miriam. <laughs> um, no, he lives alone. Uh, oh, so uh, the window next to his house has real. been uh, completely shattered. And you see large claw marks next to, um, next to the sides of the windows. Okay, so... Can I very easily see where this went? I do have a tracking. I, I can track things. Um, so can I track this guy? Also, let me tell you the story of Jimmy James real quick. He loves great. hunting This is a great things. time for this. He loves hunting things. Uh-huh. All right? So this this was like a scenario that very well may have been built specifically for him. Unless I'm, I'm afraid of what this might be now that I think about it. But we'll see how that goes. So anyway, so you're you're gonna try and track it? Yes, I'm gonna try and track whatever this beast was that did these claw marks. Track check me. Oh, oh, baby. <laughs> oh, baby. What's okay? So it's 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 success, hard success, and then what? Extreme success. Hard. Success. It's an extreme success. Holy shit! There's nothing to track. Even. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't Even, exist. Yeah. <laughs> it's all your mind. Even in the dim moonlight, you can pretty distinctly make out that these appear to be reptile claws. And with your tracking, you see that it probably went into the house. Uh, all right. I go, I go up to the house and I kind of peek in. You, where do you peek in from? Uh, he went in through the window, right? The monster appears to have, yes, with your excellent tracking, you, you swiftly deduce it went through the window. The um, sound of breaking glass yeah, did I, not give it away. <laughs> Uh, I, I I check out through the window that he broke. Okay, yeah, you see um you see the glass shattered on the other side of the window inside the house. You can pretty clearly make out a uh, a path of uh, some sort of destruction. Sort of a the, the paintings knocked off the wall, table looks out of place, and you can see further past all that down the hallway. It appears to have gone up a flight of stairs. Okay, I've I make sure that my first off my rifle is in hand. Okay. Yeah, your rifle is in your hand. Okay. Uh, I assume it's um, loaded. It is definitely loaded. That's what I'm gonna say now. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna head up the stairs. Well, you're not inside the house. <laughs> oh, I go in through the window and then slowly creep up the stairs. Great. You, you're you're gonna make a dexterity check. Holy shit! That's a one. <gasps> With wow. the grace of a fucking cobra, I don't even know. <laughs> You slither, yeah, like an, uh, yeah. You you slither into the house and you army man crawl your way uh, down the hallway and uh, yeah. Okay, you make your way up the stairs. As you... <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. That I'm shit. so mad. I have all these rolls on this. <laughs> <laughs> all right, as you uh, place your first step on the stairs, you hear a scream, a blood curdling scream of pain uh, from upstairs. All right, I swift switched my whip. Okay. With my my uh, revolver in the other hand. So you put the rifle. Right. So so hang on. You had the rifle out and you s snaked your way inside. And mm -hmm. now now that there's actual danger afoot, you switch to the other. Okay, that's fine. Can you fine. combine? The, the two? Hold, let me let me explain. So the Wait. rifle is Wait. for in, in case long range. You know. Uh huh. The whip short range within ten feet. You know, and then the revolver is also shorter range, you know, so revolver in left hand, which I'll be clear, he is a righty. <laughs> okay, I'm glad Whip you cleared that up. In right hand. Uh, so I assume you're going to go up the stairs now. I'm not up the stairs yet. I thought I went up the stairs. You're up the stairs now. <laughs> uh, so I head towards the screen somewhat slowly, but with a with a some speed, some pip in my step. Okay. Not pip. I'm not happy. <laughs> Okay, yeah, you, you follow the, the sound of the scream down to a bedroom. Inside, 
you see your neighbor. He is clutching his arm. Blood is oozing from it. And around the corner, you see a long tail slide heavily uh, into another room. So if I were to go towards my neighbor, Mm -hmm. do you have a name for him? Yeah, his name is Gerald. Gerald I head towards, so if if I were to head towards, if I were to head towards Gerald, I more or less be in the like would the th- other things in the other room the Do thing is in the other room to to- okay so i'm going to kind of run ish over to gerald while keeping my eye on the room that this thing just went in okay yeah and by eye i mean gun <laughs> <laughs> gerald gerald clutching his arms has J- james hey what the, he- <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are you doing here <laughs> oh, boy, <there> <laughs> i forgot <laughs> well, well I heard a crash at the window. Figured I'd come over and make sure everything's all right. Well, are you gonna stop the thing that did this to me? Would you like a first aid kit, real quick? I can, I can patch you up real quick. Do you think you're gonna die anytime soon? No, I'm okay. Get that thing. Cool. I'll go get it. Um. All right. You uh, you run to the to the room you saw the monster slip into. All you see as it uh, as it stands at the far end of this uh bathroom is is again that massive whipping tail and it appears to actually just sort of be trying to do a kool-aid man and uh jump through the wall uh you probably have time to do one action if you're quick i'm going to uh uh throw my whip or like i don't know what do you do with the whip 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 it whip it you know whip, whip my whip. Real good. whip whip whap okay yeah at, so. at aiming at more or less his leg i guess Okay, make a whip check, and you're gonna. I'll make a. Uh, he's gonna. He's. I mean, he's like just booking it. So. Okay. Beef out, home boy. All right, that is a success. He got a uh, hard success, so your your whip sort of snaps harmlessly against the scaly legs <laughs> as it uh, just bursts out of the uh, second story wall. You hear a thump and uh, a bunch of heavy footsteps as it runs off. I pop I, I pop my head out the, the hole that he just made in the wall uh, and real quick pull out my rifle and see if I can first off see him and then second shoot him. So I'll check if I can spot him. Can I it, spot him? Is he clear? In the moonlight, you get a good glimpse of what it is. And why don't you go ahead and make a sanity check? A, a sanity check? Oh, how do I do that again? Do I just do a regular roll and check if it's below my... Number? Yeah, below your current sanity. Hey, what happens if we get to zero? Oh, you're insane. Oh. I got a, a six, so... A zero six? A zero six. Is that bad or is that... No, good? that's super good, Brett. You <laughs> you do you do really well at sort of not being startled by the fact that you're looking at a large bipedal lizard creature, probably about eight feet tall, not too far off from a dinosaur looking thing but uh a little more humanoid and it is taken off down the street if you want to shoot it all right i'm gonna i got my rifle out i'm gonna i'm gonna shoot at it okay he again is going to contest that that's a 50 that's a success yeah he got an extreme success and it completely uh you're the only thing your bullets really seem to do is set off the neighborhood dogs What, what are you gonna do now bud well how far how far away is it Oh, it is, it is fucking booking it. It is much quicker than you. All right. I, I turn to Gerald, Gerald, my friend. Okay, great. Do you say that to him? Do you say Gerald, my friend? <laughs> no, no, but but I, I I run over to him and I kind of, uh, I, I, is he laying on the ground currently? Yeah, he's sort of like slumped back uh, against okay. uh, against a table in the room, uh, still clutching his arm. Perfect. Jimmy James runs over to him and, and like cradles him. He puts his head in his hand. <laughs> And like, he's like, Gerald, Gerald, I'm here for you. You're going to be all right. <laughs> he's so Yeah, I mean, you, I, it got my arm good. Do you, do you have any bandages or something? Well, I offered that earlier, didn't I? Okay, there was sort of a more pressing matter, though. Fine, fine. Uh, I <laughs> I do have a first aid kit. Okay, great. Um, yeah, you pull out some bandages. Why don't you make a first aid check? That's a failure. <laughs> you sort of... You sort of slap some bandages, uh, like not you don't like apply them. You just sort of slap them against his arm, um, and he he it sort of sits up a little suddenly. He's like, "Okay, nope, that's fine. Guess I'm doing this one myself." Uh, he sort of he sort of brushes you off. Well, I got to do everything else for you, don't I? Oh, 
oh, with an angry glare, he goes into the bathroom and you hear uh, the sound of uh, water running as he uh, cleans his wound. He sort of wraps a towel around it and comes back out and says, uh, okay, well, that happened. Can I ask you a few questions about what just happened there? Or... Uh, yeah, I'm not doing anything else right now. Super awake right now. Cool. Uh, what What was that thing and why was it here? I don't know what it was. Probably a man in a costume. That would be my first guess. Okay, I'm gonna say probably not. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How many how many big lizard creatures do you see running around Sensaba uh, there, James? Uh, I see very few, but I also don't see many people who run around in costumes who can also break through walls. <laughs> what? And run very, very fast. Oh, yeah, by the way, there's a hole in your wall now. <laughs> Is that what that breeze was? He like goes back over and you hear a light flick on. Oh no! Oh, oh! I'm renting this house. Really? You're you're not rich either. Well, I am. <laughs> no, not not everybody's rich. J Jimmy James has a very poor understanding of how the common folk work. <laughs> yeah, banker Bill doesn't need to take this. <laughs> banker just, Bob, thank you. <laughs> just just call your father. I'm sure he has money. Right? <laughs> Brushing that comment off, he says, <laughs> I do know exactly who did this. All right, who was it? A woman named Danica. I, listen, you, you saw the thing, right? Yeah, I did. Can you, I know, I know we don't know each other that well, and you sort of came in here and uh, maybe saved my ass, so I, I can't, I can't necessarily ask a favor of you, but please, it would mean a lot. Can you, can you come with me uh, to, to vouch my story? I'm not sure, Gerald. I don't know if we're ready on. I don't know if we're on that, you know, relationship step yet. I don't know if I can go away with you, <laughs> James. James, no, no. We're just going to a private investigator in town. Oh, we're not. We're not going away for the weekend together. The, <laughs> no, we're driving maybe fifteen minutes into town, bud. Oh, okay. I can totally do that. Then. Does James crave intimacy? <laughs> do you? Can you drive right now? Maybe. What, what do you mean, auto. maybe? <laughs> I'm a little drunk. <laughs> I'm not the best in driving. <laughs> but I can try. Hey, I got you with that. You uh, don't exist yet. <laughs> I'm not a baby. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and make a drive auto check? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> My new car. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a failure. <laughs> <laughs> what what you get, bud? I got a, I got a twenty-seven out of. Tw I, I got a, tw I have twenty, but I got a twenty-seven. Oh no! <laughs> That's so upsetting. All right. Yeah. Well, obviously, uh, you. Just, which card did you try to take out? I do know you have multiple cars. Yeah, I was about to ask if you had any. <laughs> of course um, he does. No, I think I only have one car currently. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. That's my bad. Currently. I can have multiple cards. So, so he takes the pierce arrow. Okay. Yeah. You, you I bring out no your legs. pierce arrow. Uh, it's, it's. A, bright shiny car you probably got it just a few few weeks back um you stick the key in and you go you turn it nothing happens james, james shoots you or what the fuck is the guy's name gerald Bank gerald gerald, gerald. Banker, Tom? Ba banker bob <laughs> gerald shoots you a disapproving look and it sort of motions for you to just get in the passenger seat oh you fuck you colossal fuck and with one good arm he uh elegantly drives the car Beep. Um, so as we're driving, I'm gonna try and kind of charm him to make him not dislike what? me after the rude comments. What do you- gonna, what are you gonna gotta, say to him? Uh, listen, Gerald, you know, I've always admired your home, and I've always <laughs> only seen it from the outside, but it's a very beautiful <laughs> insult, so I'm gonna- I'm gonna roll that. That's a 44! So a success? That's a success. Just so we're clear, I had a 45, and it would have been. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Look at you go. Um, Gerald, <laughs> Gerald looks significantly less upset with you, um, and I think sort of appreciates that, you know, you may have very well scared this creature off, or at the very least come at an opportune time to uh, be a witness to all of this. All right. You guys drive off into the night. Um, Just a quick question. Did I use up my first aid kit on him? No, you have supplies okay. in it. Okay, good, because that would have been a waste of a first aid kit. <laughs> let, let me add that this is that was a very romantic moment that they just had. I know. The start of something magical. Dandy. Hey there. What is your nightly ritual like? All right, so here's what happens. Dandy has a long day, probably having no customers. Mm -hmm. um, 
she sort of wanders around, and then she, by the time she gets home, she flips her sign, she turns off her lights, um, she just kind of wanders into the one bathroom in her house, office house, <laughs> she works from home! Um, <laughs> is that like a lighthouse? No. No, it is actually nothing like a lighthouse. I wish. That would be sick. Okay. I would have so many more customers, purely on aesthetic alone, I imagine. <laughs> um... <laughs> And she, you know, kind of takes a shower, brushes her teeth, gets herself into her little little PJs and just sort of crawls underneath her desk with her singular little limp blanket and flat pillow and prays to God that someday this gets better. Wow, that oh. is maybe the saddest <laughs> wow. uh, backstory I've ever heard. What was the last case Dandy worked? The last case Dandy worked uh, and got paid for because okay. was a couple, a couple of weeks ago, uh, a senator's wife. Pay, uh, didn't really trust whatever her husband was up to sort of paid her to uh to do some investigating and uh dandy found out that he was cheating on her with like several women and when she reported this back the senator's wife was like hell no and the senator wasn't super happy with that so he kind of like the, the wife obviously paid her so that was good but the husband was super mad when he found out so he kind of like kind of slandered her a whole lot and now she's not really getting the, any customers. All right. And now, how long ago was that? I'm going to say like a few weeks. Maybe like, uh, I'm going to say like two months ago, maybe a month ago. Okay. And how long have you been working out of home? Uh, if it was two months ago, I'm going to say a month by now. Because, she I mean, she's not a fairly like, if she's like 23, she's probably not fairly experienced as a PI. Yeah. Um, she's still, <laughs> she was sort of just getting on her feet. She was making a name for herself. She was doing pretty well uh, until that shit rolled out. Not good. So she uh she definitely lost the the shitty apartment she had. Um, mm-hmm. So she's been there probably like two to three weeks now. Okay, so just about thirty days in the hole. Yeah. Uh, super. Thirty days in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> well, now see, now we're gonna get double sued, which is wonderful. <laughs> we are <laughs> fucked. We are actually fucked. At four fifty three in the morning, Dandy, you hear a loud knocking at your door. God, Jesus, fuck! What the. Great. <laughs> All right. Well, I go check the door, and I like kind of pull back the. Car- what? Hello? What the? What the fuck? You see a man dressed as a copyright-free character named uh, Oklahoma Stephen, and Stan. Uh, Stan. Oklahoma Stan, and standing next to him with with an arm heavily bandaged, is a well well dressed man. Guys, the hospital's like like three doors down. Oh, Gerald, we want to go somewhere else. No, no, no. No, 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 no ambulance, no, no police, no nothing. Listen, lady, we need you. You, okay? Can we come in? Fuck yeah. She opens the door. All right, yeah. Brett, you and, uh, you and Gerald make your way into the office. All right, I, like, I, she walks in really fast and kind of shuffles shit around, so it's a little bit of a mess in there, and she sits behind her desk. She grabs her, like, her little P.I. cap off the, uh, the coat rack and just puts it on. She's in pajamas. Like, just, like, black button-down pajamas. <laughs> she's in Jimmy Jams? And, exactly. It is, it is four in the morning. You're going to have to excuse that. And she's just now wearing that with her P.I. cap. And she's like, oh, uh, oh, sorry, sorry about the mess, guys. Uh, wh- what, can, what can I, what can I do for you, uh, boys today? Listen, I'm gonna tell you something crazy. Go for it. I was attacked by a monster tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh, hmm. Like, like a person monster? Like, oh, he's, Fuck that guy. He's a monster. No, like a bipedal dinosaur creature. Huh. Mm-hmm. I turn towards uh, Jimmy Jim Jams. I'm just like, is your friend, uh, is he okay? Besides his arm, he's right as rain. Okay. I, I'm also right here. I can oh. I can hear every word you're saying. Okay, bud. All right. Yeah, I put, I put my hand on his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> are you, are you, are you going to try and make another charm check? Yeah, why not? I'm witnessing a romance. That's a whole oh, shiznips. That's a, that's an ex, a, a extreme success. <gasps> well, I guess he blushes a little bit. <laughs> Dandy Defo smiles. She's like, oh. And he, he sort of uh, adjusts himself and says, all right, I know who did it too. Oh, well, that actually makes my life a little easier. Yeah, go give me these, give me these deets. A woman named Danica Jones has set this whole thing up. I know it. All right. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about Danica? I'm a banker. Mm-hmm. I know that's not about Danica, but I'm a banker, mm-hmm. and she approached me last week. I, I whip out my uh, my little notepad. I start scribbling this down. Okay. He says, she approached me last week, 
and uh, requested a loan for her organization. Uh, what can you tell me more about this organization? It's a group called the Late Dawn Order. Mm-hmm. They are, well, I guess I should just hashtag spoiler alert. They're a cult. Ooh, spicy. Took me about two yes. days of research to find that one out. And uh, when I found out that they were a cult, I promptly told them to fuck off. Uh, Wait, she did not. question. Uh, what, what makes this cult so evil? Because there are a lot of cults in the world, man. And, and you got to be accepting of some of them. Are you? Well, are you? No, don't need hmm. to be accepting of any of them, actually. Uh, and I super wasn't going to give these people money to build an expansion for their little cult house. Yeah, I hear you. I feel like that was probably a good choice. Yeah, so anyway, delivered the bad news in person, no less, because I'm a classy gentleman. And, uh, well, she vowed revenge and stormed off. Hmm, that sure does fit the build. Yep, or, uh... and uh, five minutes... Five minutes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Five days later, I was visited by a large lizard monster who broke through my window, came upstairs, knew exactly where I was sleeping, slashed my arm, and then, I'm sorry, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe Mr. J uh, James here can uh, just verify this for me, uh, broke my wall and went out into that good night. I guess what I need from you is to, uh, check this woman out, see, see how she did it, who is responsible for breaking into my house specifically, uh, and information that links her to it. You will, of course, be compensated heavily for this. Uh, and he passes you a $20 bill. She's like, oh my god, hell yeah, this, this case opened ve very much a priority case. Well, that's good. I don't know how many other cases you have going on right now, but I'm glad it's a priority. Absolutely. He actually gives you, James, a $20 bill as well. Well, just wipe his ass with it. Gerald, I really appreciate this, but uh, you're going to need to fix that wall. <laughs> or yeah. maybe we should give it to this woman, because obviously, uh, looking at this place, she doesn't have much money. Okay, well, I, that's well, uh, that's mm. probably neither here nor there. No, the reason, I, oh. James, the reason I'm giving this to you is uh, because you you know what it looks like. Can you, can you also infiltrate the cult? Uh, hmm. That's a interesting question there. You got anything else better going on, bud? I'm thinking of things that I could have possibly have better going on. God, why don't I have friends? Fine. <laughs> Fine, well, yeah, sure. I've, you know, I've never really worked with a partner before, let alone one who immediately insults my wealth status. You know? It's all right. Mm. Oh, we're gonna have it's all right. Maybe you'll learn that. a thing or two from yeah, me. Yeah, I'll learn a thing or two, huh, buckaroni? Yeah. All right, I'm we're a seasoned professional like you. We're just gonna move right along. Uh, we're gonna hit up a spot that she frequents. It's a it's a local bar in town. Cool. Can I? I mean, can I put on some fucking pants? Oh, oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, go, no, go, you gotta go get ahead. in your jibby jams. Yeah, hold on a second before we go any further. I just realized. You know what? It's four in the morning. I have not introduced myself. Hello, my name is Dandy. Please introduce yourselves as well, so I know who the fuck I'm working for. Gerald. My name. My name is Jimmy James. Great. I'm going to go put on pants. She goes in the bathroom. I'll wait outside. Jimmy James Thanks. walks outside. Great. Make a pants check for me. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Beth. Extreme success. You, you with, a, with the swiftness of a professional track runner. Can she do two legs at once? Just like jump in. Two yes. legs at once. <laughs> pants put on. It's amazing the energy you feel at like five in the morning. Wow, pants. I like how like every minute it keeps advancing by an hour. <laughs> no, you got there at like 4.53. I thought we started at 3. I thought this you all happened did. at 3. You had to drive to my house. Gerald had to get ready. You had to then fight. you had to drive. You had to fight. Yeah, you had, you had to fight, fight a little bit. You had to fight you had Gerald. Some, you had some secret makeouts in the car. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Anyway, by the time, by the time she, everyone is all ready... It is probably six in the morning. Why don't you walk me through Ernest's morning rituals? Oh, Ernest. Okay. So he gets up, he, you know, he turns on all the lights and he, he, he slept at his photo studio last night. So like, does he sleep at his photo studio often? Not often, but like, does he, he doesn't... have anywhere else to go? Yeah. He has an apartment. Does he? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, no. I, I counted for that. Don't worry. So yeah, he has, but like he's he's dedicated to this photo studio, you know. Okay. So like he well, gets up. Is he dedicated to the photo studio or is he dedicated to the sleazy bar in the back of it? He doesn't really give a shit about the bar. That's just for money. 
Okay, so he is actually dedicated to photography. Yeah, but he's bad at it. Yeah, what's your photography? One. Okay. <laughs> Great. All right, super. Uh, at Amazing. six in the morning, uh, there is a knock at your door, Ernest. Knock, knock. Party o'clock. <sighs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and Ernest opens the door. Uh, standing in front of you is a young woman with glasses uh, clutching a notebook a Oklahoma stan looking motherfucker and uh, a well-dressed man in a suit with one of his arms heavily bandaged. Well, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, why are we here? The, the well-dressed man actually lets himself into your place. Oh, oh all right. Oh, okay. I'll step aside. <laughs> this is Sick Nasty Photos by Ernest. Yes, this is uh, Sick Nasty Photos by Ernest. I am Ernest, Ernest Hawthorne. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Dandy. Nice to meet you, Dandy. Uh, and, and you are? My name is uh, my, Gerald. And my, with... and my name's Jimmy James. Jimmy uh, James. I, I, like your, I like your hat. <laughs> it looks sweaty. <laughs> uh, Jimmy James tips his hat and says, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I kind of catch like a foul stench coming from that hat. <laughs> Gerald is, is poking. I don't know, hold on. I don't know why you guys think that he has a smelly hat. He has like 30 of these. <laughs> All 30 are smelly. <laughs> um, <laughs> They're like labeled by smelliness. <laughs> Ger- Gerald is poking and prodding through your, uh, your stuff, uh, Ernest. He's like rudely shoving aside can I, paintings can i help you with with anything sir yeah you can you can let me into the back i need to speak uh, to the bartender i am the bartender uh well we hold on a hot flip flop in minute what the fuck i mean uh you, you guys should come back with me okay. I, I lead you all to the back and uh oh shit it's i sweet i boots. like kick in the door <laughs> <laughs> wow classy <laughs> And this is the back. You may take a seat. And I, like, pull out four bar stools. Uh, can I have a Mohegan sunrise? What the fuck is that? <laughs> can, can, can I have a Gory Mary? I, I'll get you something. <laughs> and, um... Are, are there peanuts on the bar? There, There's an assortment of, like, peanuts and pretzels and, you know, are other they, bar foods. Are they moldy or stale? No, they. I put them out every morning. I shove all of the pretzels in my bag and pretend that I didn't just do that. <laughs> Make right. a stealth roll. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this woman is stealing my food. <laughs> well, we don't know for sure if anyone notices. Wait, what just happened? Ooh, uh, that is a hard success. Yeah, so stealthily, you slide the fresh pretzels and mixed nuts into your bag <laughs> I, um... and return the empty bowl to the <laughs> counter. So I, uh, after getting everybody a drink and, you know, putting everything out, I look back and I'm just like, I see that everything is gone and I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> Jimmy, woo, you're hungry. <laughs> is right. anybody here like a little overweight? Gerald is maybe slightly overweight. I look at Gerald and I'm like, ooh, you hungry there, boy? <laughs> All right, this is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Ernest, I, I, I need to talk to you. Okay, what? It's about one of your regulars here. I have reason to believe that a uh, woman named Danica, she's a redhead, maybe wears a robe here sometimes, a uh, regular of yours. Do you know her? Oh, a robe? A robe, yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah? Sorry, sorry. Damn, yeah, Beth. Sorry. But, um, <coughs> what, what kind of robe? Like a wizard robe or like a... No, more more like a, a robe. It has a very distinct uh, sunrise uh, emblem on it. Okay, I know. Uh, I think uh, I think I recognize who you're talking about. I almost guarantee you would recognize. It's like yeah. one of those things where if you saw her face, you would know, but like the Is name... Is she ugly? Is that what you're saying? No, <laughs> not... We're getting off track here. Right, Listen, right, Ernest. Right. Uh, Let, let's hear it. I need... I need some help from you. This here, this here is Dandy. She is a uh, private investigator. I'll privately investigate anything. She's sitting very weird in her (laughs) bar stool. Yeah. Sorry, I'm a bit warm. (laughs) It's all right. It's warm. How is Dandy sitting in her bar stool? I guess like, I guess she's sitting weird. So she, maybe her legs are kind of, she's kind of slumped. Maybe she didn't get a whole lot of sleep. Maybe she stays up all night because she's just pondering the, like the meaningless existence she's living. Yeah. Also the, the shitty sleeping bag under your desk. Not even, not even. It's just one, the really thin ratty blanket she found in a garbage you had to fight a man for it wow it's amazing that you uh you, it's amazing you get sleep at all 
she is uh she's helping me investigate uh this woman danica we uh we believe that she is responsible for uh my arm here and uh damages related to my arm oh, and spicy uh, bitch. here is what i was thinking i have these two here they're going to uh try and infiltrate the uh the cult get information related to what's going on okay i need you to determine how to get into it how how one can uh become a member i've uh, i've tried to send my own people hasn't gone very well okay uh, she's she's a regular here I, i'm sure you could schmooze on up to her um well you see the funny thing is my, my charm is not very i'm not very charming you don't need to be charming. You just need to convince her you're depressed and you need help. Now, uh, do you do you know how frequently she visits this place? Every fucking day. Oh my god. She'll be here in about thirty minutes. What? Oh, fuck! It's six thirty in the morning. Yeah, seven <laughs> o'clock on the dot every day. <laughs> uh, how how long does she usually stay for? <laughs> Until I close down. Oh my god. That... She, sometimes she doesn't even drink. She just stays in here and talks. <laughs> She'll sit there all fucking day. Won't even order her water. Eats your pretzels. No. <laughs> just sit there. All right. Well, this is wonderful. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to leave before I blow this whole thing. Yeah, before you eat all my fucking pretzels, too. Okay. Uh, he passes... Dan <laughs> Dandy, he passes you a number. It's his number. Oh. He says, uh, call me when you have information about this, okay? I wink at him. Sure. <laughs> He doesn't say a word and exits the bar. I turn to James and like, sorry, I didn't mean to hit on you, man. James, James has been eating the, the peanuts that were left over that she didn't grab. So <laughs> he's like very much crumbs. enthralled in those, peanut, in those peanuts. <laughs> he had no clue what was going on the first few minutes. Uh, okay. You, I, I, can, I, can, I can refill those for you if you want. I mean, you don't can have to lick it. Can I have some pretzels? I didn't get any pretzels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. That fatty animal. <laughs> Yep, didn't need a single pretzel. I pull out this this massive fucking like bag of like pretzels from behind the counter. It's probably like a ten gallon bag. Oh my god, yeah. a ten gallon bag of pretzels. <laughs> I don't know if that's how they measure pretzels. You have any honey that is not sauce? how they measure. <laughs> no, friend. because what you do is that you, you they take they take all the dough and they put it in the bag. <laughs> Uh -huh. yeah. Sale bag of pretzels, you just punch it a whole lot. You got pretzel bits. Gross. Hi everyone, my name is Max Marone and you're listening to our mid-show ad break. Just wanted to thank all of you for tuning in and listening to this. It's uh, it's something, you know, we sort of put, put some time into and we're really excited to finally be able to launch this. If you like what you're listening to, episode two should be available as well. So... You know, the fun the fun train never has to stop until episode two is over, and then you're going to need to wait. New episodes, we plan on launching weekly every Monday, probably mid-afternoon. Uh, might change here or there, but that's that. Uh, if you're listening to this on a service that lets you rate and leave comments and subscribe, please, 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 please do that. It would mean a tremendous amount to everyone involved in the show, and it also is good for the podcast itself in terms of uh, marketing, getting new people interested, and all that fun stuff. If you want to support us, uh, we have a Patreon. That's patreon.com slash tincast, T-I-N-cast, one word. We have some fun goals that we'd love to start doing, including uh, special one-offs that we're going to live stream, monthly Q&As and a whole bunch of other fun shenanigans. Uh, if you're interested in spreading the word about the podcast, you can you can reach us on Twitter at, uh, that's capital T-I-N underscore cast. We're going to be using the hashtag TinCast, one word. I think hashtags need to be one word anyway, but that's okay because we're going to use it just as it is. If you would like to get your name as a character in the show, uh, we're going to be pulling from people who use hashtag 10 cast to spread the word. This first arc that we're launching with is actually already pre-recorded. We have all the episodes at this moment in time done. It's going to be about seven episodes, I believe. So we don't really have room to put anyone's name in there. But as we sort of whittle through our backlog of episodes and are recording new ones, that's when we're going to start pulling from the Twitter list. So if you're interested, and maybe want to hear uh, us say your name a whole bunch as as a minor to major character 
in the show, please tweet it. It, it would mean the world. Also, if for whatever reason you uh, none of those other medium platforms are doing it for you, please hit us up <laughs> at our email. That's tincast13 at gmail.com. For the life of me, not 100% sure why at this point you would want to email us, but if, if you know, if you just got to ask us something, please go ahead. Where our ears are open to you, kind sir. Got a few people I need to thank as well. First of all, I need to thank Christy Abraham and Sabrina Frassine, who have been extremely patient while we have been working diligently to get this off the ground. So thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. And uh, Daniel Riss for providing the album art. Um, you can follow him uh, on Twitter at Roverati. I may have mispronounced actually everything that I just gave you, but hopefully not. Hopefully that is okay. That's all for this ad break. Uh, please enjoy the rest of episode one. And again, you can listen to episode two right now. So thank you. Seven o'clock on the dot, Ernest, you hear another knock at your door. What the fuck? Okay. <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> That's how you greet him every day. What the fuck? Okay, That's how I greet everyone. <laughs> so you, you go, you, I assume you go over to open the door. Yeah, and I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> Standing uh, in front of you is a uh, woman with long red hair. She uh, she is indeed dressed in a robe. And I, I feel like probably something something snaps in your head and you're like, oh yeah, that's, oh, that's exactly, yep. Yep, she's the ugly one. <laughs> <laughs> and she says, uh, and I do say that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you too, Ernest. No, no, not talking about you, Mel. I'm sorry. May I come in, Ernest? Yes, of course. And I, uh, I open, I, uh, I like lead her in. She, uh, she goes into the back and sees <laughs> sees that there are already two people <laughs> seated at the bar. One of them has a what did you get? A Mohegan Sun? A Mohegan Sunrise? Did I actually give anything? Did... Uh, no, I put down four drinks for everybody. It was just like, uh, oh, what did you put down? It was like really shitty alcohol that i made myself i'm sniffing it i haven't taken taken a single sip i'm just sniffing it no i respect that danica sort of uh jimmy james has been slowly sipping it <laughs> very very but, very but like a very very manly all right well i guess everyone here's a day drinker <laughs> i haven't done anything i've just been sniffing it i guess jimmy james is a day drinker <laughs> What else does he have to do? He dresses up like Indiana Jones. Jesus. <laughs> well, Whoa. he said it. Whoa, Ken Kentucky, Kentucky Kent. Uh, Oklahoma Billy. Danica waves a little awkwardly and uh, says, Oh, I didn't expect to see anyone else here this early. Ernest, who who are your friends? These are uh, these are just customers that came in very, very early. Do you ever expect to be in a park at 6 and 7 in the morning? Dear, is it, what day is it? <laughs> Ernest uh, like leans over to this girl and he's just like, She's had a lot to drink. <laughs> a lot to drink. Danica slides immediately over to you, Dandy. Uh, so puts her arm on the counter and says, uh, What's your name, sweetheart? My my name is uh, Dandy. Dandy. That is that is a wonderful name. I ain't feeling so dandy. Why? Why? What's the matter, Dandy? I, uh, I've been having a lot of money troubles. Money troubles? Probably uh, doesn't help that I'm at a fucking bar. Oh, yes. What a... What a scummy place. She like leans over and is like, no, Ernest, no, it's great. <laughs> I just kind of swim. <laughs> what if I told you that there was more to life than monetary value and and the 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 idea of, of living large? What if what, what if, if I can investigate murders instead of random horror situations? No. I, oh, my dream. <laughs> what if what if you could do something more positively for the community? What Ern if, Ernest like starts murders. eating the peanuts with uh, with Kentucky Tim over here. <laughs> so watching this play out, like, ooh, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> Look, uh, free drama. <laughs> uh, Jimmy James has just been looking forward. Yeah. He's not paying any attention to what's going on. He's just like zoned out eating these, uh, eating these peanuts. <laughs> he's on the side of it no he's just he's just there you know and and when uh ernest shows up he kind of like looks at him and nods a little bit to give like a hey i notice you and then goes back to just eating pretzels ernest like kind of nods back and he's like all right i'll stare too and ernest starts staring off in the distance as well <laughs> eating peanuts and and you there sir why why are you at this bar at this unholy hour of the morning i'm sorry ma'am you talking to me <laughs> oh my gosh i didn't know you were australian 
<laughs> well, you know, sometimes you <laughs> learn things about people, you know. You don't judge a man by his outfit. <laughs> why? Yes, sir, I was... T- Yes, sir, I was talking to you. Why Why are you here at this bar? Well, you know, sometimes you're just walking down the street at whatever time it is, and you realize you haven't had a drink in a good 20 minutes. So. <laughs> 20, 20 minutes? Speaking of which, can I have another one of these, Mr. Mister Bar? Man? Uh, yeah, of course. And I, uh, I pour you two more. <laughs> uh, and... He wasn't really finished with that one, so he just chugs it. And as like once he finishes it, he like turns away because it's so disgusting. <laughs> He's just like holding back, like throwing up. There's like tears rolling up his eye in his eyes, and uh, Ernest is just like, "Yep, that's what everybody does." Oh no! Don't cry, sir. <laughs> don't cry. I understand. I it's, I know it's so good. I too. Yummy. I too have struggled, and and I. I promise you, there's a way out. Are you sure, ma'am? Like, listen, I even named my rifle a Martini Henry. Well, I didn't name it. I bought a Martini Henry rifle because it had the name Martini in it. Can you get past that part, ma'am? I don't think so. And he slams down another one of those disgusting drinks. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I promise you, I could, I can help you. I could help all of you. Ernest, I could even help you redeem your sinner ways and... Close down this sinful establishment. What the fuck? Wait, si- sinful what? I mean, you're in here too, man. Yeah, why? Why the fuck do you think I come here every day, Ernest? To get drunk off your ass? No. <laughs> not to get drunk off my ass. To get drunk off of helping sinners recover from their sinful ways. Well, that sure is nice. I think so too. And Ernest, you have been providing these sinners with sin. <laughs> <laughs> Liquid sin. <laughs> Liquid sin, Ernest. But I can help all of you. Really, I can. My organization, we deal with wayward souls, wandering spirits, and we we get them back on the path of righteousness. I, I, I turn to this woman, and uh, I look her deep in the eyes, and uh, I say, before I join any, join any, any hokey organization, I need to know everything there is to know about it. And this is a persuasion check. Oh, that's a failure. So close. My little lamb, all will be explained in good time. I turn to her and I'm just like, I'm going to try and charm her. Okay. I'm going to say, ma'am, this this all sounds amazing. You're amazing. Can, really, could you could you tell me a little bit more about this? I just I just want to make sure I'm, I'm about to make the right decision. Okay, make a charm check. Success. Oh, my little lamb. <laughs> I am a founding member of the late dawn order we specialize in helping people get back on the path of righteousness as i've said we have a multi-tier process uh, with just a small upfront cost to help keep us going we get you exactly where you need to be mm-hmm. how, how much is this upfront cost because me and my fellow bar goers here <laughs> we don't have much in the way of money well First, we take you back to our establishment. It's uh, it's off of Maplewood Ave. Um, you may know the, uh, the the factory that was abandoned a few years ago. We uh, we've we've purchased it and renovated it, and now we call it home. We take you back there, and at no cost to you, we will evaluate you. We will determine your emotional and mental state, and from there, we we will prescribe the best treatment and uh, come up with a cost and plan that just works for you okay if we're dirt broke like no money what what if i just don't want to spend money on this but i do want to be in your organization (laughs) there are of course other ways to give back than monetary compensation liquid sin do you want my alcohol (laughs) no i have i have no use for your sin juice beautiful photography (laughs) No, have no use. I for like the... pull out my camera and take a picture of her, <laughs> and I like kind of fall while I'm taking it. Make a, ma- oh, make a photography check. <laughs> God, yeah, that's that's a that's a failure. Can I borrow your camera? Forty six. Yeah, you do. You do slip, and uh, and yeah, you have a feeling that's not going to come out to be a good photo. Oh, we'll we'll see about that. Hold up. <laughs> Can I borrow that camera for a minute? I like kind of alley oop it <laughs> under my leg. Oh, great. And toss it to Dandy. All right, I want to make a photography. Well, check. hang on. He is throwing it. 
Okay. I dig it, Markles. Make oh, a... man, what's my... Hold on. Yeah, what is your throw? I mean, gosh darn it, Ernest. I didn't put anything in throwing. Gosh darn it, Ernesto. Oh, great. <sighs> yeah, I failed. That's the same number I got last time, too. Great. 46. <laughs> your, your camera... You, you alley-oop it, and it crashes <laughs> to the ground. Probably a good 10 feet from, uh, from Dandy. Takes a fair amount of damage. What the fuck, Dandy? What the fuck, Ernest? I stand up to go grab it. I'm just kind of like standing there. I'm like fake swaying. I'm I'm pre- I'm drunk. Okay, you're fake drunk. I'm fake drunk. I'm fake swaying. Okay. Um, I pick up the camera, and I want to take a photo with it. I want to see if it still works. Okay. Who are you gonna? What are you gonna take a photo of? I'm gonna take a photo of the lady. Okay. I'm just like, oh, excuse me, I'm, I'm just gonna see if this fucker broke his camera. Do you mind if I just take a photo? Because you're just really pretty. Absolutely. Oh, hell yeah, that is a good, a really super good success. Not an extreme success, a hard success. A hard success. Yeah, you have a feeling it's gonna come out to be a swell picture when it's actually processed. Fuck yeah. She says, so, what do you guys say? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I'm wasting my life otherwise. I guess I don't really have much choice than to throw myself into yet another thing maybe that'll be slightly better than the last time i tried something new okay cool (laughs) well it's a little early in the morning i have to go uh get the troops prepared for you all what uh why don't you all is this a military no just an expression Ernest. oh (laughs) i'm ready for it if it's a military (laughs) jimmy james slams his hand down on the on the bar is jimmy james for real drunk he has been drinking he's had been he's had two really gross drinks how he's strong about are they, to have his... yeah, yeah, how, how watered is... down are your drinks, Ernest? They are not watered down at all. Like, oh, it's oh my like, god. It's like 140 proof. <laughs> <laughs> why don't uh why don't you all come down and what what time is it now? 7:30. Why don't you all come down around 11, let's say. Okay, where are we going? Uh Maplewood <laughs> Avenue, the the old abandoned factory. But it's not old right and next, abandoned. Right next right Right next to to Pice Wall Street. I, uh, I have a feeling he's maybe maybe just a little bit more drunk than me. I kind of like clap him on the back. I'm like, yeah, we got you, buddy. Oh, that's that was that was nice. That was nice. <laughs> oh, and just he takes, point. He takes another. He drinks the rest of. His I life. like. I, maybe I grab his his. Can I tr- make it try to grab his like hand before he like reaches it to his lips? Strength contest. So just a little while well, Beth is doing her strength thing, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this out there. Ernest doesn't drink at all. Like he he runs this bar and everything, but he's never tasted alcohol before. Oh shit! Okay, I got a thirty-seven. Well, what kind I of also got a thirty-seven, but no, that's my that's a failure for me. <gasps> oh, that is uh, a thirty-seven is a hard success for me. Oh my god! Yeah, uh, <laughs> Jim, Jimmy, you try to chug down that last drink, and you feel a strong arm hold down your drinking arm. <laughs> Hey, hey, bud, remember, we're not, no more sin. Just yes, one let's, more. Let's <laughs> all give up sin. I'll see all of you at 11. Toodles. I, I like, slide him another one. <laughs> Ernest! <laughs> Drink up, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, real real quick, drinks it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, like, looking, I'm, like, glaring at Ernest, and he just, like, pops one back, and I'm just like, oh, you guys are fucking. All right, Danica, Ollie's out of the, <laughs> Ollie's out of the photo studio. She whips out a skateboard and just, like, slides away. <laughs> <laughs> and you all now have a date at an abandoned factory i've never been on a date before i haven't had a date in months i paid for one last week <laughs> oh.